One of my favorite stories of all time was written in 1895 by American author Henry Van Dyke. It is called The Story of the Other Wise Man. According to this, there originally were not three kings, Caspar, Melchior, and Baltazar, as we have come to know them, but there was a fourth one as well, a young man by the name of Artaban, also from the ranks of the Magi, who also had been studying the stars. He was to meet his three friends in their country far away, and together they were to follow the star and seek the newborn king. The other wise men had prepared gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Artaban wanted to bring gifts too, so he sold everything he had to purchase three jewels to bring to the newborn king, a sapphire, a ruby, and a pearl. When he saw the star rising, he set out to meet his friends and follow that star. On the way to meet them, he came across a dying man on the side of the road. Artaban fell into a quandary and thought, What should I do now? If I stop to help this dying man, I will surely be late to meet my friends. They might go on without me, and I might miss my opportunity of finding the king. What shall I do? Shall I risk the great reward of my faith for one single act of human love? Can I deviate even for a moment from my pursuit of the star in order to help a dying man? Artaban did not pause for long. He came down from his horse and nursed the man back to health before continuing his journey. Arriving at the house of the other magi, he found that they had already departed, leaving him a note saying they had waited as long as they could. Artaban was in despair. He thought, I can't make this journey with what I have. I'm going to have to sell this sapphire I had for the king in order to buy a camel and provisions for the long journey across the desert. So he did, and he set off for Bethlehem, where he knew the king of kings was to be born. But when he arrived in Bethlehem, he found that his three friends had already been there, left their gifts with the newborn king, and departed. What was more, Mary and Joseph and the child had also already departed for Egypt in fear. This was all told him by a woman nursing a child in her home. As the woman gave him something to eat, and he played little with the child, suddenly there arose from the streets a tumult of voices, weeping and crying. People were shouting that Herod's soldiers were coming and were killing all the children. Without thinking, Artaban stood straight and tall in the doorway of that mother's house as the soldiers came. In his hand, he held the ruby he had bought for the king. The captain of the guard asked, Who is in this house? Artaban said, I stand here alone with a ruby in my hand for the first prudent captain who will leave me in peace. The captain looked at the magnificent jewel, pocketed it, and called off his men, saying, there is no child in this house. Let's go on farther. Artaban's conscience was bothered that he had now spent two of the jewels reserved for God, spent them on human beings instead. How was he ever to be worthy to see the face of the king? But he went on his journey, traveling to Egypt, Every time he arrived at a place where he heard the Holy Family was, he discovered that they had just left. So he went from place to place, from country to country, always in pursuit of the king, and never finding him. But he had been told that the king was not to be found in a palace, but amid the suffering people. So he spent his time among the starving, 
among the poorest of the poor. He spent his time in the wretched prisons. He spent his time visiting the sick. He spent his time with the slaves. All through those lands, all through those years, in this world of anguish, that other wise man found none to worship, but many to help. And he helped all he found. Thirty-three years he traveled the world in pursuit of the King of Kings. He had begun his journey as a young man, and now he was already an old man with white hair. He heard that in Jerusalem a man was about to be crucified, a man who was regarded as a king, a man who had spent his life doing good for others. Artaban realized that now, at long last, he had his final chance to see the king he had pursued his whole life long. So he traveled to Jerusalem, to the Mount of Golgotha, where the crucifixion was taking place. But just before arriving at Calvary, a screaming, crying, terrified girl broke loose from the arms of the soldiers leading her and fell before Artaban, saying, They're taking me into slavery. Please help me. I'm about to be condemned to a fate worse than death. Artaban did not know what to do. It was the old conflict in his soul, that conflict between the expectation of faith and the impulse of human love. Already two of those gifts he had purchased and consecrated to God had been used for the benefit of human beings. He had only one gift left, but the impulse of love was too great. So Artaban, the other wise man, gave her the pearl, saying, my daughter, this is your ransom. This is the last of the gifts I had for the king. When he placed the pearl into the poor girl's hands, suddenly the sky became dark and there was an earthquake throughout the land. We realized that Christ has just died. In that earthquake, a stone fell on Artaban's head, and he lay dying. The girl looked into the face of the dying man, and she thought she heard a heavenly voice. Then she heard Artaban himself saying, Oh no, Lord, I have never seen you. When did I see you hungry and give you to eat? When did I see you thirsty and give you to drink? When did I see you in prison or sick and visit you? When did I see you naked and clothe you? Thirty-three years, Lord, I have been looking for you, but never have I seen your face. Then the girl heard quite distinctly, a voice from above saying, As many times as you did this for the least of my brothers and sisters, you did it for me. And on Artaban's face there broke out a heavenly smile. He breathed his last, dying a happy man. His journey was ended, his gifts were accepted. The other wise man had found the king. Whether we are kings or queens or not, whether we are wise men and wise women or not, we all go through life carrying our gifts to the king. We all go through life in pursuit of God. There are those who would say those gifts are to be used only in the worship of religion. Gifts consecrated to God are to be given to God alone. Yet every step of the way we are confronted with suffering humanity. We are confronted with the conflict between saving what we have for God alone and giving in to the impulses of human love. There are those who say that we are never to give in to the impulses of love, 
that the worship of religion is all that matters. Yet the story of the other wise man and all the teachings of the Christ show us that it is precisely when we give into the impulses of love that we find the King. And at the end of our journey, our gifts too will be accepted, and we too shall see the King.